pardonable sin. It's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, guys. It's not divorce. Now, does that mean divorce is okay? No. Let's get this straight. Let's And let's make sure God is not okay with divorce. And don't ever say, Pastor Scott said, divorce is okay. I can just go get a divorce. I can leave my wife or I can leave my husband and, and uh, get a divorce because it's okay. No. It's not okay. God's not okay with divorce. He actually, in Malachi 2.16, if you look there, God says he hates divorce. He hates it. Um, and we'll, we'll probably go back to Malachi. I know we will, but look at, look at Proverbs. I want to show you something here. Proverbs 6. This will help us. It's going to help some of you. I, I, I know there's those that are going to be listening that, that have been divorced. And, uh, you know, I, I, I want to, I, I believe what God wants is healing. God wants restoration. God wants you walking righteous before him. And hopefully I can, I, I, I'm not the authority on it, guys. And we'll see at the end where I where I lead this and take it to. I, I hope it, it brings some healing and I hope it brings some clarity to you and that's that's what I that's my desire. My desire is to lead you to God, the Holy Spirit and, and to let God work in your lives. Um, Proverbs 6 16 um, am I in the right spot? No. Says these six things the Lord hates, yes Seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift and running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren. These are seven things that God hates. I know there's some other things in there. God hated Esau. Um, he hates all workers of iniquity. There's other scriptures that I could quote. Um, but we see here seven things God hates. So divorce is not the only thing God hates. Matter of fact, he doesn't even mention it here. It's just another one of those things God hates. Um, so if you're lying, uh, if you're all proud and puffed up, uh, if you shed innocent blood, you devise wicked, you're sowing discord among the brethren not a real good place. God don't like what you're doing. He, matter of fact, hates it. And you need to repent. <laughs> and we're going to talk about that tonight. Um, I'll try to stay on my notes here because I can definitely start preaching right now. Um, it says in Matthew uh, 19, turn over there real quick. I'm just going to lay a little groundwork here and then we'll you know, make sure we Always go with the scripture. We talked about that the other day. You know, let, let the scripture always be your standard that you go by your judgment. If somebody has a word from the Lord for you, it'll always line up with the word. If you feel like the Lord is giving you a word, it will always line up with the word. Always. This is our standard we go by. If it doesn't line up with this, sorry guys. It's, 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 it's not, not going to work. Matthew 19, 6. So then, so then, they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Let no man separate what God has joined together. That's what God meant from the beginning, guys. That's what we talked about the other night. Covenant. We talked about commitment. Till death do us part. Man, that is what God meant it for. And that's what God meant now. Why do we have divorce then? Why? Isn't that a good question? Don't you think that's something we said? Because there's obviously divorces, isn't there? Yeah. 
Matthew, just a little further down, the 8th verse is picking up there, 19 verse 8. Then he said to them, because they asked him, why does Moses give a, a certificate of divorce? He says here in verse 8, he says, And he said to them, Jesus, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, permitted you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. Because of the hardness of your heart, a hard heart. And my wife brought my attention. She said, well, some people are going to think, well, if there's, you know, other reasons, maybe it could be both of them. Yes, it can be both. It, it can be one person. But it's always because of the hardness of a heart. Let's look at, um, and I think this will bring back, this will bring some clarity. Look at, look at Malachi. Um, you know, we, we, we read that one verse, but you know what I like to do is always read the verses before, the verses after, and get the, um, it helps me get what it's really saying. I've been doing that ever since I got saved, and the Lord spoke to me to read the Bible. And um, I've read book by book by book, and not verse, just verses. Um, yes, sometimes I look to verses for answers, but um, I always try to harmonize the scripture with scripture. Um, Malachi, let's look at, um, let's pick it up in verse 13, the second chapter. And this is the second thing you do. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping and crying. So he does not regard the offerings anymore. Here they were weeping and crying, but he wasn't regarding their offerings. Nor receive it with goodwill from your hands. He says, yet you say, for what reason? Because the Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth, with whom you have dealt treacherously. Yet she is your companion, your wife, by covenant. But did he not make them one, having a remnant of the Spirit? And why one? He seeks godly offspring. Therefore, take heed to your spirit and let none of you deal treacherously with the wife of your youth. For the Lord God of Israel says that he hates divorce, for it covers one's garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that you do not deal treacherously. Wow. I think I just said a mouthful. When we divorce, it's because one of us, and, it, it, and I know here he's talking about the husbands, um, but it also can be the wives, I really believe. We're, we're dealing treacherously with one another. We've hardened our heart one way or the other. One of us has hardened our heart towards the other. Um, Mark 3, 5 talks about how a hard heart grieves God. I'm, I'm going to read that for you real quick, and then I'll come back to where I was. But listen to what this says in Mark 3, 5. And when he had looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, and then he healed the man. Jesus was grieved. Why? Because of the hardness of your heart. Man, when you harden your heart, when you commit divorce, and divorce is why? Because of the hardness of your heart. And it doesn't mean it's the hardness of both your hearts. Listen, it can be one. The other person could do everything right. They could be praying and standing and, 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 and the other one can just harden their heart and walk away. But one person or the other or sometimes both harden their heart. That's the reason for divorce, guys. Because of a hard heart. And you grieve God with a hard heart. It's all too often we are more interested in being and I left it out, then being wholly happy. 
you know what? I'm just, I just want to be happy. So I'm going to leave my wife. Some people say God wants me to be happy. Yeah, some people would even say God wants me to be happy. Doesn't he? He doesn't want me to be miserable. He doesn't want you to be miserable. Well, hmm. what he really wants, guys, for you out there that are seeking happiness instead of holiness. And what is holiness? Holiness is nothing more than the character of God. Divorce is definitely not the character of God. So if you divorced seeking happiness, you you know, without holiness, wait a minute, you will not see God. Hmm. Your happiness means you don't see, it separates you from God. That's more important. No, what God wants is us to be holy. And yes, really, we should be happy with the Lord. That should be where our happiness is in Him. What if God sends you and puts you in a place where you're being martyred? I don't know how happy, much happiness that's going to bring. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, those people that were in the concentration camps, I'm sure some of them were serving the Lord. I don't know how happy they were. I don't know how happy Brother Elliot was sitting on that beach when they speared him to death. But he sure was being holy. He sure was showing the character of God when he had a gun in his plane. He could have got it and shoot, shot those natives. But he chose not to. He gave his life for them. And they ended up getting saved because of it. Should have just shot them. Right? I mean, you know. Then he would have been happy. Could have went on and lived his life in happiness. Be holy, for I am holy, says the Lord. Be holy. When, when is divorce okay? Never, never, never. It's never okay. It's never okay, guys. Does it happen? Yes. When is sin okay? It's never okay. Guys, it's... But it happens. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every single one of us. I've sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, do I continue to sin? No. God forbid. I repent. Can it be forgiven? Yes. Sin can be forgiven. And that's what divorce is. Divorce... I put here, what should be done when we sin or when we divorce? 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The first thing you do is you confess, you admit you're wrong. Admitting that we're wrong. We miss the mark. I missed it, man. Man, God, I... I've let heaven down. And maybe it wasn't you. Guys, maybe it wasn't you. Maybe it was your other spouse. I'm talking to those that have been divorced. Maybe it's the spouse. Maybe the sp spouse committed adultery. And really, do you, it, it, Jesus said only for adultery. I know what he said. But even then he said it only because of the hardness of your heart. I don't think divorce is the excuse out. I think that the, 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 the way out is the worst way. Really what we need to do is forgive and that's what God really wants us to do. Because what do you want? You want God to forgive you. What happens is somebody commits adultery. We harden our heart because of what they've done. And our hearts are not soft enough to forgive them. And we divorce them. Now, can God heal our hard heart? And can we move on? And do you remarry again? Yeah, yeah. It happens. But what we've got to do first is admit we're wrong. Come to that conclusion. Admit you're wrong. Acts 3.19. Let's read that. Mm -hmm. Acts 3.19. 
And don't ever go tell somebody, you, you, I heard Pastor Scott, he said divorce is okay, because no, he did not. Mm -hmm. Let it be noted. It's never okay. Sin is never okay. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that a time of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Listen to me, guys. That word repent, it means to have a change of mind uh, 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 for the better, for um, to amend or to make efforts to make right. The first thing you need to do, the first thing you need to do in that relationship, when, when divorce, sin, when it happens, is you need to do everything you can. You need to have a change of mind from whatever went wrong to how can I amend this. I'm not saying it's always can be amended. That's not what I just said. But you're going to have an attitude and a heart to amend it. That, and if, if, that's, if, if you see somebody that's got a divorce and that's not their heart and that hasn't been their heart, I have to question, did they ever repent? Were they ever repentant? Because a repentant heart means I'm going to do everything I can to make amends, to make it right. Now, doesn't mean you can always make it. Sometimes you cannot amend it. Sometimes that other person won't allow you to amend it. Listen, if I went out right now and, and shot somebody in the street and killed them, yes, I can get forgiveness, but I can't amend that. I can't, unless God raises them from the dead, I can't bring them back to life. The damage I've done I, in front of their children, left them fatherless, motherless, whatever, it, it, the damage is done. The damage is done. Sometimes it can't be amended. But the heart, man, I could be sorrow. I could, I could realize what I did was wrong, and I could confess my sins. I could tell that family, I, I, I have wronged you. Man, what I did was wrong. And what can I do to bring amends to you? You know, I, I would say to somebody that says, you know, my, my wife divorced me, and man, I don't feel like paying child. I, I, I'm going to tell you right now, yes, you should. You should support them. Man, that's the godly thing to do. Well, they're well, they're nothing. What what would you what would Jesus do? Ask yourself that. What would Jesus do? Let's do what Jesus did. Let's be like Jesus. Here's what it is. Let me tell you what it is. It's a heart issue. And God's gonna look at your heart. In 1 Samuel 16, 7, you know, Samuel was looking at the outside. Uh, just, he brought all his kids in. We're talking about where he anointed David as king. He brought all the people in. And he said, you know, the first one he looked at, he thought it was great. The rest of them, I think he was going, well, we're not looking so good. Because you ain't got any more. Because the prophet was looking. Here was a guy that heard the voice of God, man. I mean, this is... This, this guy's a champion of the faith, man. He's a, you know, but he's looking on the outside. God's looking on the inside. He says, there's no others? He says, well, I have this one shepherd son that's out there watching the sheep. He says, well, get him and bring him. And sure enough, that was the one. God had, you know, man had looked at the outside, but God's looking at your heart. It's a heart issue, man. How's your heart? 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Let's look at this. Hopefully this brings some clarity. This is where I'm going to challenge you. Um, if you if you've been divorced or you're th you know you're going through it, um, man, do everything you can do to reconcile. Do everything you can do to make it right. And, and if you've just left your wife or your husband to run out and marry somebody else to make you happy, brother, you are in sin. You need to you need to run back. You need to turn around and. and, and you know, you, you you need to make it right. I don't know why I'm in Ephesians and not Corinthians. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Second Corinthians. I, I probably could quote this verse actually. I'm not gonna try to sign him up in this spot, but I want to make sure. But 
Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. <laughs> Test yourself. Do you not know yourself that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified? Take a good look at yourself. If you're going through this, guys, if, 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 hear what I'm saying. Examine yourself. Examine your heart. Look at your heart. Is my heart right in this? Am I doing what's right in the sight of the Lord? Am I doing everything I can do? And if you're not, ask God to create a clean heart in you. Renew a right spirit within you. Remember David? What did he cry out? When he realized what he had done wrong, man, he was broken. He, he, he said, God created me a clean heart. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And if, you re if you've done something, when you realize it, repent. Man, ask God to create that clean heart in you guys. Check yourself out. Really check yourself because here's what it is. It's a heart problem. Divorce really is a heart problem, guys. A hard heart. Amen? I know that was kind of short, sweet. Hopefully it brought some answers. You have a question. Mine says reprobate. What's that? Mine says reprobate. Reprobate. Reprobate.